the end of the day, we take care of our clients. And even if they leave for a little bit, our goal is always that they think about us when if they're like, hey, look, I can't afford this anymore. I got to take a break that they're at least going, man, that was really nice when Made for Muddy Paws came. And you know, even if they can't use us anymore or if they switch and they use another company, they're like, oh, Made for Muddy Paws was better. That's our goal. So as far as the numbers go, it's just one of those things that has evolved over time and has made us be a seven figure business now. Introducing The Vixen Voice, a podcast for ambitious women entrepreneurs ready to move into their feminine essence, live their truth, and unlock their full potential. I'm your host, April Roberts, and each week I'll be interviewing inspiring women who decided to take a leap of faith to pursue their dream. Women who believe that they were born for something bigger. Hi, and welcome back to another episode of The Vixen Voice. Today, I'm so excited because I have my new friend, Brittany Murray, here with me. And Brittany is the founder of Made for Muddy Paws. What a fun name, right? We're going to totally get into that story. So first of all, Brittany, welcome. So glad to have you with me this morning. Thank you so much for having me. I'm happy to be here. (laughs) <laughs> Me too. And I'm just going to share with the audience because I like everyone to know that life isn't always perfect. Brittany and I just spent like 20, 30 minutes making sure we could go live because as you can tell, I'm on location at the Vixen Mastermind. If you're watching this on YouTube, we both had technical difficulties. So this is the reality of recording many shows, right? And being business owners. Would you agree, Brittany? There's always problems to solve, right? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Every day is a new day. Yeah. And so we're going to dig into Brittany's story today. I'm going to share with you why I wanted to have her on the show and why I think y'all are going to really love our conversation today. So my client and friend Bexwood told me, hey, I have this friend, Brittany Murray. She's like doing things like she's flying around the country, organizing people's house. She has like a thriving business here in Magnolia, Texas. And so anyway, we got connected and we had a lot of things going on. So now we're finally getting together to go live with y'all. But what I'll share is Brittany's fun. She has a zest for life and she runs a freaking phenomenal business. So I'm so excited to really dig into her business today, her strategy behind it and how she's built the business. Because I know a lot of you listening really want to do what Brittany did. She left her career as a dental hygienist to run her business. And we were chatting before going going on. And like she said, is it's not like you wake up one day and you're a business owner. So we're really going to kind of break down this process for you today. And I hope, number one, we inspire you to take steps to start a business or grow your business or have a side hustle. And number two, you see that it's not always perfect. And that's part of the journey, right? And that's what builds character and makes you a good business owner. So Brittany, again, super excited to have you. I know we've had a little panicky 20 to 30 minutes. So hopefully we can. Oh my gosh. (laughs) It's fine. It's normal, (laughs) especially in my world. My goats are running loose. It's a mess, but you know, that's what makes it so fabulous. I love it. I love it that you're talking about goats because you shared with me the name of your business made for Muddy Paws came because you wanted to combine your love of animals with your love of cleaning. So tell us a little bit more about that. Yeah, absolutely. First off, I want to thank Bex for connecting us. So thanks, Bex. I really appreciate it. She's been a client and lover and and she's also incredible and successful. So thank you, Bex. And yeah, I mean, the love for animals has always been there. I've always, when I get bored, I'll end up picking up a stray dog. I've been into fo- you know, in foster. I've had several foster fails and, and then, you know, several get adopted. And especially during that process, finding someone to clean my house was, it was difficult finding someone to trust, finding someone that would clean the way that I would clean. Because typically my schedule was Monday through Thursday. I'd work dental hygiene and Fridays I would deep clean my house every week. And I think a lot of dental hygienists can attest to we spend Fridays cleaning our own place and uh, we love, most of us love to clean and have that niche, but I got tired of that. And I was like, you know, I just would love some help at this point, especially with all of the dogs and, and living on property and the dust and everything. And so it seemed impossible to find someone who would wash their dog bowls and do my dog's dishes and move the dog kennels and 
you know, maybe let the dogs out to potty because I was at work all day. You know, I just was like, I was so unhappy in my career and it was just so repetitive. I didn't have, I lost the drive and I'm like, what else am I good at? And cleaning has always been my thing. And that's why my parents were like, go be a dental hygienist, clean teeth, because you can't be a maid your whole life. You have to go to school. You have to get a degree and have that kind of career. And and I did that and then went right back to what I love. And the pets have been the catalyst and the our niche really is is what we've kind of I guess, capitalized on at this point. (laughs) Yeah. And people love their pets. So, and they love a clean house. So what a better thing to combine, right? So exactly. I love one thing you pointed out because I see this a lot in women of our generation. Like I know I went to law school because my parents are like, you need a degree, right? And then I became a lawyer because I'm like, well, if they put all this crap in my head, I'm going to go use it, right? And it was the easiest way to make a lot of money out of school. And by the three years of law school, all my other friends had been out making money for three years and I was very poor in law school. I didn't really have any money to do anything fun. So, you know, I was driven by the voice of my parents in my head, plus like this desire to make money and change that situation. And I think a lot of times we do start out in something that maybe eventually is not ideal for us. And I think I like to say our parents came from the status generation where they were probably the first generation to make money. They wanted good things for us. And it was like, go to school, get a degree, go work for a big company or a big law firm and like, you'll be good. And so I love that you discovered, okay, this isn't really what I want to do. Because same thing happened with me and law, and I hear it from so many other women. So do you feel if left to your own devices, you would have still gone to school, started doing dental hygiene, etc? Or what path do you think you would have chosen for yourself? Oh, my gosh, I go back and forth, because I feel like I should have been an attorney at this point. But at the same time, you know, I think that's a fabulous career. But yeah, yeah, I ultimately get to do what I love. So I feel like it's the universe. It brings you where you got to go. And this is just where I need to be. And it's just evolved so naturally and organically that I know it's just where I'm supposed to be. So yeah, I think if I had to do it all over again, I mean, mind you, I went to dental hygiene school. I was 18, 19 years old. I mean, I didn't know. I didn't know what I wanted to do, but the cleaning part felt right because it was a professional job. And at least that's what I thought. And, you know, I'll be treated professionally. And and then I soon realized that dentists are not CEOs. They're not, they don't go to medical or dental school to, to be business owners. And then you realize that very quickly when you start working for them that, oh my gosh, this is so unorganized. I started realizing that I think I'm an entrepreneur instead of just, you know, working the eight to five. Yeah. And you bring up a great point. A lot of professionals who end up owning their own business, like they don't understand there's a difference in being really good at what you do and managing a business. Because I remember, I think I was like 2008, I started financial planning and about 2012, I had a business coach come in and like a strategic partner who's like, hey, we're going to teach you how to run a business A to Z, right? Like, it's great that you're an amazing financial advisor and your clients love you, but like you need to know how to run a business or you can't grow your team and scale. And of course, I was really grateful for that. What steps did you go ahead? I, I think you have a comment, but I'd be curious, like what steps you took on your own? Because I kind of had outside influence. And I think a lot of professionals don't realize this difference in being a business owner and being good at what you do. Well, I think for the most part, there are some dentists that have completely changed the game and they've taken, I honestly want to be turned loose in the dental field now and just like, let me run the place because it really could be something. But, you know, those that are not CEOs and business owners and that don't want to do the payroll and the bookkeeping and the hiring and the, you know, the firing and all of the ins and outs that come with it, you know, they hire someone else to do it for them. And usually that person may or may not be qualified to run a group of women, especially. I learned so much. And there was a long period of where I was like, God, why in the world did I just waste this time going to school to clean teeth when I'm not even going to use it and I'm not going to do it and I don't like it. And 
boy, was he always has a plan because yep. I, I didn't know back then and I was frustrated and I hated my job and I would cry and I was so mistreated in so many different circumstances that I just started temping and working at this office and then that office and this office and that, so that I didn't have to learn the drama of each space. But with that, I learned how to manage people and how to treat people. And I could never understand why dentists treated us like we were disposable, like they could just replace us tomorrow. And there was just this just overwhelming feeling of not being valued. And I think with Made for Muddy Paws, it's a very high turnover industry housekeeping. But at the end of the day, our goal is that when we've had several girls leave and come back. And I think at the end of the day, I've paid electrical bills. I've co-signed on vehicles for employees before. Don't recommend that. But it worked out. I've paid off loans when they've had an incredible high interest rate that they were never going to be able to pay off on their own. They are valued because without them, we wouldn't have a business. So I learned that. And that is an incredible thing to learn and to take. And then also scheduling, smart scheduling, and knowing that this time and this day, And we're going to build from there, from the in out, because you don't just have clients knocking on your door saying, and now we might, but that's taken years. And before it was, okay, how do I work part time as a hygienist, build my business, market, do email reminders and text reminders and keep my books straight. And I I got audited right when I first started my business. It was horrible. I had to pay like an $11,000 fine for not not charging people sales tax. And so I, you don't realize, but when you throw yourself into it, that's the best way. And I actually just had a conversation with someone this weekend and she's in cosmetology. And I'm like, why are you working for someone else? You could be doing this yourself and getting a hundred percent of you know the return. And she's like, she started listing all the reasons. And I'm like, you can't think that way. Because if, if someone would have told me that I had 30 staff members, five vehicles, insurance, 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 and an office and, you know, supplies. And we were spending $20,000 a year on Swiffers at one point. I don't think I would have done it. (laughs) So I told her, I was like, you got to quit looking that way and just think of, is this what I want? Do I want the freedom? And do I want the return? Maybe you don't. And those people make excellent, excellent employees, especially if they love what they do. So yeah, I, I learned a lot. I learned a lot from working as a hygienist. Yeah, I agree. I I feel, you know, at one point I taught English in Italy, long story, but I was married to an Italian and my law, law degree is not recognized in Europe, right? So like I was like not employable because I would apply to be like a legal assistant or even make copies. Like I was trying to get any job at a law firm and they'd be like, no, you're overqualified. Okay, but I can't be a lawyer because you don't take my license. So <laughs> it's crazy. I ended up teaching English for 12 12- 12 euros an hour. Like I was wow, six figures and it was crazy. But like, you know, when you have like a personality like us, you have to do something like I had to do something. And I am so grateful for that time teaching English because I taught executives and I taught in professional settings. And God bless teachers because this <laughs> yes, this a day is exhausting. Are the kids better in Europe than than here? Or is it still <laughs> I'm teaching adults and they're oh, adults. Totally worse than kids yeah <laughs> oh gosh it's that active listening right no one tells you that it's a skill set but I developed that during that time, getting paid 12 euros an hour. Maybe I made 14. I can't remember. And then I went on to become a financial advisor. And all my clients are like, wow, no one's ever listened to me the way you listen. And now I interview people and I coach for a living. So like that listening skill and understanding that led to all of this. So I can very much appreciate like you had to go through what you did being an employee so that it made you a better employer. Right. Absolutely. Well, it's just funny that you say that because back to what I was saying about, you know, why am I a hygienist? Like I, I only worked for four, four and a half years, really full time. And, and it's funny because I have a happy place and that's in the San Juan Islands off of the coast of Washington and near Canada. And I go there so much that I'm like, I need a job when I'm here. What am I going to do? Because I go there to vacation. I love orca whales. I'm a dorka. It's a whole thing. 
And when I went there, I was like, okay. So I posted, I was like, hey, look, I own a, you know, successful housekeeping business in Texas. I'm going to be here for this long. Anybody want any housekeepers? And the pay rate was so low there that I was like, yeah, that's not worth it because I want to pay for the trip. I want to, you know, work. And it's funny because you said that. Well, I got my license, my dental hygiene license in Washington, and I'm leaving on Tuesday to go work out there for a few weeks for a dentist who's super stacked to have me because it's an island. He's like, our staff would love a day off. Like if you could come and work for them and let them have a few days off, like we don't have anyone to cover for them. And the pay is incredible. It's excellent. It's actually really good. And and I get to go to my happy place and work. But now I'm kind of like, I'm I'm crazy because I can't just go and just relax. I have to I have to be doing something. <laughs> so I'm gonna tell you a funny story. Bex and I went to Laguna Beach, California because I coach a group of spiritual healers that are in my classes with me. And many of them like have jobs, this their side hustle. They don't have a ton of money. And so Bex very graciously, I was like, if I give you a free trip to California, will you take pictures of my clients for me? And so like we kind of did an exchange and I have tons of Amex points. So I got us like a room at the Mon montage overlooking the ocean and we're both like Friday morning wake up in bed drinking coffee and working and we're <laughs> happy as larks with yep. the, the ocean and I mean you know then we went to lunch and had margaritas and we had fun and we went to art galleries but it just kind of is who you are if you have your own business like you're doing what you love so work isn't terrible and it's the freedom to like do it wherever you want and whenever you want and serve people so I love that yeah, I'm here in Sedona right now. If you're watching, you can. It looks beautiful. Yeah, it looks beautiful. I hate that you can join us next time. I want you at the retreat because I know I told you I was leaving, and I'm like, there's there's no way that I could pull that off with all of my farm animals, especially them running wild. Like it's it's a mess, and like I have you know I have things here at home, and I've got you know two businesses to run too, and they're like, where are you going? You're going to clean teeth. I thought you don't do that anymore. I'm like, yeah, yeah, I I do. I I work. They know I work here and there for people here my friends I'll fill in for them but they're like okay we'll have a good time and I'm like don't call me unless there's an emergency <laughs> Yes. Okay. So in my financial planning firm, I used to be like, okay, when I'm gone, don't call me unless the building burned down. And actually, if it burns down, there's nothing I can do. So y'all do your best to take care of it. Definitely don't call me first. <laughs> right. right. Make sure everyone's safe and let's go. Awesome. I love this. So let's back up and talk about the beginning of your business. So it sounds to me like you were still doing dental hygiene and then you started really your current business as a side gig. Is that true? And was it just you at first or did you have anyone working with you at the beginning? No, it was just me and my grandma. She passed away in 2015, but she growing up, if I'd come visit her, she'd call it the sweeper, the vacuum. She'd, I'm gonna go get the sweeper. And I'm like, grandma, I'm here to like visit, not clean. But everyone always assumed that I was the maid. I was, you know, Brittany's a good, she would always say, Brittany, you're such a good cleaner. You're such a good cleaner. And so you know, later in life, they lived a few miles from me and um, they had a housekeeping company that they hired because they were elderly and she would just complain about them all the time. And she's like, you just do it. She's like, they don't clean like you do, Brittany. And, and I'm like, well, how much are you paying them? And she told me, and that's literally when it clicked because they had cobwebs everywhere. These maids did not clean from eye level above. They cleaned everything eye level to like the floors, if you even give them credit for that. But really, I mean, she was right. They didn't do a good job. I wouldn't have hired them. And when she told me what she was paying back in then, I was just shocked. And I was like, okay, so I could clean. And if I'm telling you my mindset was if I clean this many houses a day, I make X amount of money. And then I don't have to work dental hygiene full time. I still needed that paycheck coming from dental hygiene because it was excellent money. But it was a way for me to just break it up to where I could go down to part time. And I'm thinking maybe I'll be happy if if I'm only working a couple days a week as a hygienist and then I'm cleaning houses because I knew that it was going to be hard work. I started cleaning our house. I started cleaning for a neighbor here in the neighborhood who we still clean for. <laughs> and she's like, oh my gosh, like 
I'm going to tell you about my sister and I'm going to tell you. And then just over time, it did not happen overnight, but it happened so organically that I, I could manage it properly and grow with, you know, the bad, if I made a bad decision, I'd learn from it and change it before, you know, outreach. If I did those things now, it would be detrimental. And so it really was God's plan because it allowed me to build as a person, allowed me to build as a business owner and offer the service that we do now. It's been through mistakes. And so I started just cleaning more and more and more. And then I backed off a day. I went down to two days a week. I was three days a week. Then I went down to two. Then I went down to finally my ex-husband who was not supportive of it whatsoever. He was just like, give us six more months at your job, you know, wait, just wait. And the dentist I was working for at the time said, isn't this beneath you? Isn't cleaning toilets beneath you? Like you're better than that. Literally the day after my ex-husband and I had that conversation and I was just infuriated. I was like, this is, you know, cause you're treated like the hell. And I feel like I was just so much more than that. I brought value and a professional side to this industry. And when that happened, I walked out, I quit. <laughs> I walked out and I packed up my room and I was like, it's time if these people aren't going to value me anyway. And then now they're going to discredit. Ultimately, he just didn't want me to leave. Like he wanted me there, I think. And so he was just discrediting it so that I would feel like I, I was stuck there. And don't tell me no, that's for sure. Because you tell me no, and I'll find a way to at least do it once and then be like, you know, I told you this could happen. And so, yeah, I just, from then on out, I, I had a childhood friend work for me for a year. Her and I, we used to clean my mom's uh, hair salon when we were kids together. I was like, you're never going to do this, Jen. Like, it's so much. And she's like, yes, I will. Like, I'll totally do it. I need a job. And like, I love working with you and blah, blah, blah. And, you know, she's such like a valley girl, like hot, super gorgeous blonde. I'm like, you're not going to, I mean, this is dirty, dirty work. And she worked for me for like a year, maybe a little bit longer. And that's when I was like, oh my gosh, I think I could grow this because if she wants to do it, I know there's going to be other people that want to do it. Then came the, okay, how do we do this? So. Well, and I love because when you go back to the beginning, because, you know, in coaching and consulting female business owners, a lot of times, and this is not across the board, but a lot of times numbers like kind of freak them out, right? And I get it because the numbers, the KPIs, the data, that's the masculine part of running the business. Like you have to learn how to know that and then use your feminine intuition to solve problems. That's at least the balance I found between the two. So I don't go so masculine. But like if we go back to your very beginning where you said, if I cleaned X number of houses a day, I'm going to make X number. I mean, you were just figuring out your capacity and reverse engineering your numbers, right? So like it starts that simple. And then as you add complexity, I'm imagining you hired your friend because you were at max capacity and people were still asking you to clean, right? So kind of walk us through maybe what happened and how you ended up like building the business and organizing from there or maybe speak to numbers and capacity. It's funny because I can't think that way. If I start thinking about numbers and it's very deterring, it's one of those things that I kind of just go with my gut. It doesn't work for everyone. And it is the masculine way of doing things. And it keeps a lot of people from doing businesses, especially like in the restaurant industry. You know, if you own a restaurant and it's about the numbers, you're probably not going to do it. And so it just depends on the type of person. And really from the beginning, yeah, my ex was like, I need you to pay me on the first and 15th. We didn't know that it was going to turn into this, honestly. And it was just kind of one of those things where I just wanted to be happy in my work. And it just, yeah, the demand, the demand is there. The demand is there. And then also, you know, there's no licensure for this. So how do you stand out? How do you compete? How do you, especially when we're on the border, you know, we're here and the amount of illegal activity cleaning homes is insane. Like, especially getting audited right out the gate. I was audited, you know, my first or second year of owning this business, as soon as I became profitable, it set me back a few steps because I had to really think about the numbers and I had to think about, okay, like I need to get my stuff in order, realize, you know, I need a bookkeeper. I need, you know, QuickBooks. I need to take care of these financial things because the government's just waiting for you for them to dip their hand in your pocket at the end of the day. And that's fine as long as you're organized. And so you know, that's when I really started thinking about the numbers because going through the audit, 
and realizing that, oh my gosh, like, how, you know, and standing out and keeping up with the demand and keeping up with, you see it every day, just random people are like, oh, I can come clean tomorrow. And so creating the values, the core values that we have and making sure that the employees and the staff that we hire are background check. And all of that's money. It takes money to pay for the background checks, to do the hiring. I mean, we spend anywhere from 500 to $1,000 a month just on our staff, like hiring and keeping us employed. We went through 67 people last year. So it's a lot. So you have to think about the numbers and it takes a special person. So even though we're not licensed, it, you got to be organized because... At the end of the day, it's hard to be the one cleaning, to be the, the one man show and then grow when you have something to offer. So that's when we really started talking about the numbers. And we've been through a hurricane. We've been through a couple really crazy hard freezes. We've been through COVID. We've been through, you know, really bad storms and just localized flooding. But like Harvey really set us back. And there's been so many trials and tribulations that at this point, I'm like, okay, you know, what's next? Because at the end of the day, we take care of our clients. And even if they leave for a little bit, our goal is always that they think about us when if they if they're like, hey, look, I can't afford this anymore. I got to take a break that they're at least going, man, that was that was really nice when Made for Money Pause came. And, you know, even if they can't use us anymore or if they switch and they use another company, they're like, oh, Made for Money Pause was better. Like, that's our goal. So as far as the numbers go, it's just one of those things that has evolved over time and has made us be a, a seven figure business now. Yeah, no, I love it. And I like, you know, talking about hiring bookkeepers, etc. Like I have a client who's a fractional CFO. And that's so cool that like a small business like you or I could actually have a part time CFO, right? Because that stuff is actually overwhelming. And thank you for being open and vulnerable about that. And also about your audit, because I think, the numbers are ridiculous. I mean, I know you're almost to 10 years of business, and I think it's like only 33% of businesses that make it 10 years. So number one, congratulations. And it's something like 50% that go under within the first four years. And I think it's, you know, how easy would it have been for you after you went through that audit to be like, oh my gosh, this is too much trouble. I don't want to do this. But instead, you used it as a learning opportunity. And I think it's important to be open about the these challenges that we all face at the beginning of businesses so that anyone listening who goes into it says, well, you know what? This is part of business. I remember a mastermind I was in for six years in financial advisory. And one of my mentors said, you know, you've been successful when you have a line item for legal on your budget. And I was like, oh, my gosh, but it's so true, right? Like challenges come up and you have to be and you learn from them. You're not prepared the first time often and you have to adapt and then make sure you're prepared going forward or that you can overcome that. It's just like Instagram. They're changing their algorithms and changing every day. Things change. Clients find new new things. The the latest thing that we're fighting right now is people are are disputing credit card charges. They're having their houses cleaned and then they're disputing it and saying it never happened. And the credit card companies are automatically giving them refunds. And that's a huge issue for a business, especially when you've already done the work. And then now you have to pay a legal team to handle that. And when you are servicing over 500 homes a month, can you imagine? I mean, it's a lot. And at the end of the day, we handle it, but it's new. It's like a new thing. And um, at least for us and all these new challenges, I think it was your questionnaire that that made, oh no, it was a, it was a magazine interview that I did recently. They asked me, you know, is it easy? And I just laughed. I was like, absolutely not. Every day it's, it's a challenge, but it's, like I said before, I don't like being told no. And I'm a fair, honest person. So, so it, it makes it a challenge for me to when people tell me no, to make it right. I'm the same way. I was laughing when you said that earlier, because that's like one of the biggest motivators for me of somebody is like, oh, this can't be done. And I'm like, oh, yeah, it is. We, we're we going to figure out a way. We're women. Yeah, I can. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love it. But you're right, because I always say there's never a freaking boring day, right? Like people. Have, Absolutely. There's never a boring day, which I think if you're built that way, you love that. But that's I'm sure why you need to go to your happy place sometimes, because my happy place is you tell 
Tortilla, Honduras, where I have property. I will nice. I just run around barefoot, like no makeup, hair thrown up. And it's amazing a week. Like grounding is real. A week of being in the ocean and on the sand, like you're just like glowing. It's so crazy what it does for your health. I love being by the water and I love orca whales. <laughs> So if I can see and and humpbacks, there's humpbacks there too. And so, yeah, it's just it is. It's my happy place. And it brings me it does ground me and it brings me back to remembering like why I do what I do. And the, now the amount of people that I employ that they need that income too. it's not just about me anymore. It's It's about the team. Yeah. And this is what I try to work with the most of my clients. And I talk a lot about this is why as an entrepreneur, you have to practice self-love, self-forgiveness and self-care because you are the foundation that all of this lies on. And when you have a team, I mean, you're responsible for their lifestyle as well as yours. Right. And so if you're not taking care of yourselves, which society has kind of gotten us women to think it's selfish to take care of ourselves and we have to unlearn that then you're not taking care of your team. And actually, that takes me back to something else you said, like when you're, you know, and I I don't want to begrudge your ex-boss, but because I think he was put into your life to motivate you to move forward. But to say cleaning toilets is demeaning for you, well, what about all the women who stay at home and that's their job? And that's like the hardest freaking job in the world, in my opinion, to be a stay-at-home mom. Like, I would fail miserably. I would not be able to do it. And, you know, I mean, that comment in general is so demeaning to women overall. And it's not just women today that do it. But, you know, this is part of loving your house, taking care of your home. Like it's a very valuable service. And it's so crazy that that's the opinion. And I know one of your passions is kind of, you know, debunking the taboo around housekeeping. So what have you all kind of done in your area or what measures have you taken to overcome the stereotype? Oh my gosh, there's such a stereotype in housekeeping and it's going to take a lot more than just me to change that. But I think that we're, we're inching in our community, especially when, you know, with our reputation of, you know, these are the type of people that they hire. I mean, we hire professionals. They have to pass a background check. They have to have a social security card. They have to have a driver's license because at the end of the day, it's, you know, as a lawyer, you know, the risk for that anyway. But also, We're making your kids beds like we're, you know, we're letting your dogs out. We're in your sacred space. So you don't just want any person in your home. I mean, I stage my house. I I don't like the bad energy. And, and, you know, we want our staff to feel supported. We want them to be happy. We want them to go into our clients' houses. And I always say it's the Lord's work, you know, using a scrub brush and, you know, scrubbing the floors and it's labor intensive. And so we want them to, you know, to love their job and to feel like this isn't just a stepping stone. And I've got girls that have been with me for years. Haley, she runs my office now with Tina. Her and Tina are incredible. I've known Tina my whole life. She's my mom's best friend. She came to work with me couple years ago. But Haley, I mean, she's been with me practically since I think she was like the next person I hired after my friend Jen and I, you know, started working together. And now she's she's running my office. She's worked as a housekeeper. She's worked as a quality manager. She's literally ranked herself up the ladder and now is an incredible, incredible asset. And she knows the ins and outs of every little part of, you know, what we do, what we do. And she's able to add, you know, that support to to the housekeepers. They respect her because she's done it and she could do it again and run circles around them. So we all support each other, but it's also just who we hire. Because if you hire the wrong person, send them into someone's home, that discredits your reputation. So then people start to wonder, you know, are they really who they say they are? I can't tell you how many people market that they are running background checks on people and they actually don't. But they tell people that they do and they actually don't just to say, hey, we do it. And, you know, we drug test, we do all these things to make sure that, you know, the girls and the guys are they're top notch. And so that's part of changing the taboo of the industry, because usually it's anyone can do it quick, fast cash. A lot of times the language barrier is an issue. And it's one of those things where if I can't do anything else, well, I can just go clean a house and it's an art. It is an art. And I'm telling you right now, it does not matter the color of your skin. 
or where you're from. If you don't know how to clean, you don't know how to clean. And I'm telling you, I've gone through enough and I've met enough people and I've trained enough people to know that it doesn't matter if you're male, female, young, old, it doesn't matter. You either have that attention to detail and that personality where you want to prefer to work by yourself and just see the before and after and that change happen. It takes a certain type of personality and not the person, you know what I mean? So, so we've learned that and that's allowed us to really open our, you know, our hiring process too. Like we're not just focused on only hiring a certain race or gender or ethnicity, ethnicity where, you know, we're, we're really open to hire anyone. They have to just pass our test as far as we do working interviews. I learned that from dental hygiene. So they come and they work with us for a few hours and we know pretty quickly if they have that gift or not. And that's what makes us different. And that's what I think is going to help keep these people here long term is that they have a gift and they're able to express that by working here and not think of it as just like a job at a fast food restaurant that, you know, that's just for now and not forever. Yeah. No, I love this idea of the working interview because even a friend of mine owns the largest virtual assistant company in the UK. And she spoke to my mastermind about like, how do you decide it's time to hire? How do you find the right person and train them? And she's very big on during the interview process, giving them a research project or something to see if they can think for themselves or if they just send you a bunch of links, right? So if it's like, hey, plan my trip to Sedona, do they come back saying, well, you have this option or this option? and here's what's best, or do they just send you a bunch of Google links and say, here's what I found. And so I hope for people listening, anytime you're hiring, if you think, how can I work a test into this interview process so I can really see the people? I know in my financial practice, if someone was working the front desk, we called them director of first impressions, our third interview would be at a restaurant because I wanted to meet them out in the wild and see how they treated everyone, how they held themselves, because that was like the first like voice and face that people interacted with when they came into my business. And so, you know, am I putting someone up there who has the social know-how to present us well and to take care of our clients? So I love that concept of the working interview. In fact, uh, here at the Mastermind, I think I'm going to challenge the women when they're hiring to think how they work that into their process. I will Absolutely. I will credit, Brit. <laughs> <laughs> Don't- well, that's how they did it in, in the dental world. So, you know, I have to give a credit to them, too, because they even had me do a working interview type situation in San Juan. They interviewed me here a few times, asked me what I would do in certain situations. And then this is kind of a trial run going there for these few weeks. That's what they're doing. They're doing a working interview that way. If, you know, it works out, then they're like, you can literally call us when you're here and come work. And I'm like, how amazing and incredible would that be? So yeah, it definitely, I have to give credit to the dental world because I kind of hijacked that from them, but I do know the value in that. Yeah, but I mean, this is the point. You learn from watching what successful businesses do or what works. And a lot of times people think they have to stay tunnel vision, like, oh, I'm in finance. I'm only going to conferences and finance. Well, I was a financial planner for 16 years. When I started going to conferences outside of my industry, my business like blew up because I wasn't just tunnel vision of, oh, here's what financial advisors do or retirement planners do, right? Like you can always learn from other people. So I do want to honor your time. I know we had a little bit of a hectic time. What I'd love to do is pivot a little because I know you've had your business for nine years. And for a while, it was, you know, only the housekeeping service because in business success becomes from doing one thing really well and then branching out. But you all have a number of other services that you do now. So can we kind of get into what those services are and like how it evolved or what what maybe the timeline was for adding other services and what your strategy or thinking behind that is. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, in 2020, I started a sister company, Passionate Organizing, and that was definitely a God thing too. It was just something that that I knew that I needed to start trying to discover. And what was so fascinating about that was that, you know, in the years of housekeeping, we will show up to a house and that, you know, and back in the day I was doing walkthroughs for, for consults, you know, I'd go see the house. Now, I mean, there's just so many, we do probably 
15 to 20 quotes a day. Like there's no way that I could go to that many homes and provide quotes in person for people. So, but back in the day I would, and they would want to quote and I would see the house and they really needed an organizer. They needed someone to come in and declutter. There was just maybe some hoarding in some situations that to me, I, I would express to them, this is a waste of your time to hire us to come clean. We need to get down to the root of why you're not able to get around your home and move the vacuum around. It's because there's so much stuff. And so we just naturally started offering professional organizing services. And I've gone to some retreats and I've and I've learned about that. And it's been such a a great service to offer because most of our clients that we organize for here in the community end up being um, long-term housekeeping clients because then, you know, we go in, we do the brunt work, we get the house situated so that then the housekeepers can maintain it for them. And it's such a, a wonderful way for both companies to support each other. So, you know, it's like Passion Eat can help Made for Money Paws and Made for Money Paws can help Passion Eat. And so the organizing has taken off. It's even turned into some interior design. We're starting to offer functional interior design, which, you know, has been incredible. But another service for Made for Money Paws on top of the organizing is our laundry service. And the laundry service, once we got our office space, we were able to bring in commercial washer and dryers to offer a 24-hour wash, dry, and fold service. And this was good because laundry, as we all know, takes hours. It takes so much time. It's a luxury. It is. But usually our clients are people that are in between moves. They haven't got ha- or their washer and dryer go out. They don't want to go to the washeteria or they come back from a large family vacation and they've got five suitcases full of dirty clothes. Or it's just, you know, hey, look, like I'm a busy mom and I don't have time. And it's just a way for us to be efficient because we can't sit in the home and wait for laundry to dry. We just can't. And so it's a way for us to come pick it up. And then Tina and Haley, Tina is our laundry queen. That woman, she's like, I can fold clothes in my sleep. She is so incredible. And she's in charge of the laundry, but her and her and Haley, it's a way for a business person to be efficient, add services that not only help someone, but it's there. And they can be working on the computer, answering calls and doing things while things are are drying and washing. And then we can main, manage it. The machines are sanitized. They're cleaned between each client. There's now there's things that we do to keep the quality there. So laundry and organizing have been two of our biggest added services that have really just taken off and also just added value to the business as well. I love it. It's such a smart move on your part. And I just want to add one thing because you mentioned if you're maybe you're a busy mom and you don't have time, maybe you're a mom that hates doing laundry. Like there's nothing (laughs) wrong with outsourcing something you don't enjoy. So you have more quality time with your family, more time to take care of yourself, more time to give back. I mean, there's so many things you can do with this time. You know, I'm, I'm a huge fan of time leveraging. And I remember one time I as someone who was uber successful, I was like, I was like, well, what do you outsource? And he said, I outsource the things that aren't worth my hourly rate or I don't enjoy. So his one example was I outsource my lawn care because I don't like it. One of my advisors who was killing it had acres and loved cutting his own grass because it was therapeutic, right? So even though he could afford to outsource, chose not to. So I just want to like open that conversation because for some reason, people like to make comments when you employ other people to do things you don't enjoy. To me, that's a win-win situation. Everyone's doing what they enjoy. (laughs) We're adding to the economy. I don't see anything negative. So hard. It's so hard. And and it's because of just the increase in, in everything. I mean, groceries, gas, everything costs more now. So we're having to work longer, work harder. And when you have a large family and you've got multiple kids, it's stressful. And, you know, the husbands are working and, and sometimes it's a stay home dad. But then you for sure need to outsource the laundry because, you know, <laughs> but no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. But no, it's there for anyone. And it's definitely a way for us to to bring that in and help the community. It's also been a wonderful way for us to give back because, you know, you have to think, you mentioned numbers before and it's like, okay, we can afford to give this much per month. And so the laundry is a really great way for us to say, hey, drop it off, 
we'll do it for free as, you know, we just had a, a client that um, was in the hospital and he had been evicted from his home and then he was in the hospital. It's just been one thing after the other. They're incredible people. And I said, look, I was like, on your way into town, drop it off. We did four bags of laundry and then I'm bringing it to him today. And it's just a way for us to say, hey, look, it's on us. It's not a big deal. Like it's our way to be able to just have something to really help people when they are in need. And I love that. I feel like that's just something that we have to do too as as a business in our community is just to help those that really are saying, hey, I need it. I need it right now. I'm struggling. I love that. And I wonder, do you promote gift cards? Because, you know, a challenge is like, let's say when someone's grieving, because I I went through like some grieving training as a financial planner, because we deal with that, right? Like spouses passing away, etc. And the challenge is everybody says, oh, what can I do to help you? Well, this person is in chaos. Like they're grieving. They're emotionally, they cannot answer that question. So like, I love if I were closer to you, anyone I knew that was grieving or going through a hard time, time, I would give them a gift certificate for your laundry service. Like that is such like a great idea to be proactive and just show up in ways you can help, right? Instead of asking. So yeah, I think that's beautiful. Well, unfortunately, we're almost out of time. I know you do have an offer for our listeners that are in your area. So let everybody know the area you service because we do have a lot of listeners in the Houston area and what services and the offer. And then I have a couple more questions questions and we'll hop. Yeah, no, absolutely. If um, anyone listening, you are in our community and you're needing any of our services, we're offering 10% off if you just mention Vixen and then we can get you, get your house clean, laundry, organizing, just let us know. And I hope that we, we get people that reach out because that would be great. It's a perfect opportunity to, to start delegating. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. And so what how far do you all go with your services? I know you're based in Magnolia. What other areas do you service? So our hub is Magnolia to the Woodlands Spring. And I know you're not familiar with these areas, maybe not, but I know from Houston. To okay, good, good, good. Okay. Cause I'm like, I don't want this to be foreign to you. So yeah, into the Woodlands Spring, we're dabbing into Kingwood a little bit. Willis. Conroe, Montgomery, Navis, a little bit of Navasota, like Plainersville area, and then into Cyprus, actually. So it goes, it loops all the way around. We're kind of in the center. And then we have staff that we hire in these locations to try to keep their mileage down. And, you know, so they kind of have their locations of where they're at. And it really helps us to be able to to serve more people. Yeah. So for our listeners in the area, they understand all that. No, I had a financial planning business. I was in the Woodlands, Katie, and Sugarland. So Oh, nice. Okay. For real. I always wanted to open an office in Cyprus, but we were about to open it when COVID hit. And so like opening another, then we went to Zoom. And I hate it because I always wanted an office in Cyprus. So. <laughs> you're like, that's not going to work. You're servicing there. It's like booming. But anyway, I love that. So if you're listening and you're familiar with those areas, definitely Check out Brittany and Made for Muddy Paws. And thank you for offering that discount to our listeners. I love it. So, Brittany, as we wrap up, one question I love to ask is, when do you feel like you're most in your feminine energy? Like, what are you doing when you feel your feminine essence flowing? Right now, it's the functional interior design. We just wrapped up a project in the Heights and um, it started out, they needed some more storage. So the question was, do you want to build the storage or do you want to buy the storage? And they're like, look, we don't have a budget. What do you want to do? And I was like, really? Like, okay, let's do this. And it took a little bit, you know, of back and forth. And then they ultimately now are just like, we trust you so much that we're actually moving her office space tomorrow. And I've selected the paint colors for the new office. We're installing a ladder for her loft and, you know, doing some furniture and some decals and selecting some things for the bathroom. And it's, we helped her with select the floors. And she sent me the photo yesterday. And I'm like, I'm like, that looks incredible. And really, when I get to see some of those things just happen and come to life and just in my head of what I vision and just it happen, it's so incredible. And it makes me feel really empowered because it's design and it's something that I think it's a blessing. And it's just something that's, you know, mine and Marissa, my business partner, I couldn't do it without her. She's the tools department. You know, she's the one 
helping build the shelving and installing the shelving. And, but the design is definitely more feminine. And I just, I really have enjoyed every second of getting to do it. And it's, it's been about our fifth or sixth pretty big project lately. And, and I can see how functional interior design is really starting to take off and helping people to store their items properly so they can keep a clean house and a tidy house. So it's been, it all kind of goes hand in hand and it's been really incredible. I love that. Well, I'm going to call you because I decided this morning, I love the kitchen in this Airbnb we're in. And I'm like, uh, I need to just build a house because when I had a house, I renovated everything, like every part of it. Well, and I'll just say, if you're going to build a house, I cannot tell you how important it is to have, if it's not me, have someone consult you on at least I'll come to your house. I'll take an inventory of what you have and I'll look at what you have and how you live. And then that way we can say, look, you need this many cabinets, this many drawers. You've got an air fryer that you need. These shelves need to be adjustable. Do you want to keep it in the pantry? Do you want to, do you have this many dresses? You have this many shoes. Okay. When we build the house and the closet, we need to make sure that these dimensions fit your things because so many people build homes and the architect just, he does the numbers, the builder, the guy, he's putting up the walls, but they think that interior design is too expensive. And the consulting part is really all you need is just virtual consulting, one, a few times visiting the site and some, and some consulting. And so I'm here for it, April. I would love it. I would be honored. I love it. I always have to reconfigure the closets because especially in my past career, I wore dresses every day and I wore dresses like everywhere and no closet is retrofitted for like all dresses. How many dresses? Always having to reconfigure closets. So I totally get what you're saying. I love it. Good. You can come design for my shoe and bag collection. That's the most important part. (laughs) Absolutely. Awesome. Okay. Well, my last question for you is what color would your feminine essence I recently heard that my aura is like a green blue color, which I don't know if it's more green or more blue, but that makes me just think of the color of the water around San Juan. And I'm like, maybe that's it. And so I have one of those auras where people like will literally walk up to me at the mall and just start talking to me. And I'm like, what? what is so weird? And, you know, and I'll talk back because I love talking, but I'm like, this is so weird that people just come up to me or at the, on an airplane, they'll just start talking to me or, you know, and so I'm like, you know, I've got to figure out this aura color thing. And so I really think that I'm going to look more into that because it's been coming up lately a few times. And, and I fully believe that, that you can have, you know, maybe some different color auras. And I think it can change too, depending on some of the things that you go through in life. And so when I was told that it made me think of the water in San Juan. So I'm like, oh, hey, I dig that. I'm fine with that. <laughs> oh my gosh. You have me wanting to go to San Juan. No, I have not been Do to it. San Juan Island. So we were in um, <laughs> Washington Skamania Lodge for one of our retreats and it was just so beautiful. We did a waterfall tour and different things. Oh, so nice. I, I want to check out the islands. Well, I know you have somewhere to go. So everyone listening, check out Brittany, check out Made for Money Paws. And one thing I do want to mention is you do do your organizing and functional design, of course, for the right price, really anywhere like you guys are willing to travel. Yes. Yep. We just went to Florida. Yeah. Yep. So check them out. And as I always say, the world needs more love. How can you show up in love today? And maybe it's love for yourself, getting that beautifully organized closet so you're not frustrated every morning. So Brittany, what's your final message that you'd love to share with our audience? Treat your staff well. Treat your housekeeper well. We're all just trying to pay our bills and be happy with our work and it's labor intensive and that's changing. Things are going away from that. And so just honor those people that are there to help you make your life easier and take care of them and respect them. And at the end of the day, it's all about communication. I love that. Thank you so much. Bye, everyone. We will talk to you soon. Bye. Thanks again for listening to the podcast. If you enjoyed today's episode, be sure to hit subscribe so future episodes are automatically downloaded directly to your device. And if you want access to today's show notes, including links to all the resources we mentioned, visit vixengathering.com slash podcast. Thanks again for listening, and I'll catch you next week for another episode of The Vixen Voice.